courageous first ladies who changed the world. Washington. I have learned that the greater part of our misery or unhappiness is determined not by our circumstance, but by our disposition. Martha grew up working on a farm with six younger siblings. She learned that anything a boy could do, she could do too. During the Revolutionary War, Martha showed great courage. She came to winter camps, nursed sick soldiers, and brainstormed strategies. As the first First Lady, Martha welcomed to her home anyone who wanted to discuss the new country. Abigail Adams. Remember the ladies, and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Abigail's parents taught her to visit the sick, feed the hungry, and bring clothes to the cold. When Abigail married John Adams, she didn't know that one day she would be Mrs. President. for her big heart and smart mind, John regularly asked Abigail for ideas. She wanted women to have rights in their new country and taught her children to fight against slavery. Dolly Madison. Habit and hope are the crutches which support us through the vicissitudes of life. Dolly helped her mother run a boarding house to earn money. That's where she met James, who later became her husband and the President of the United States. Love discussing the needs of the country. What do you think about this? She'd ask. What should we do about that? She invited leaders to her home often and held the first inaugural ball. In 1812, when the White House was on fire, Dolly made sure an important portrait of George Washington was safe. Roosevelt. You must do the thing you think you cannot do. Eleanor was just nine years old when she became an orphan and went to live with her grandmother. It was a lonely childhood with lots of time to think, but she studied hard and learned about all kinds of ideas. In her time as First Lady, Eleanor fought for fair pay, equal rights, good living conditions, and better treatment for workers. Some people say she was the most important First Lady in history. Jacqueline Kennedy. There are many little ways to enlarge your child's world. Love of books is the best of all. Jackie always had a gift with language. Her essays and poems were published in newspapers. And she could speak English, French, Spanish, and Italian. While 
while in the White House, Jackie helped her husband write inspiring speeches to rally the country. Her love of the arts brought opera, dance, Shakespeare, and even the Mona Lisa to the Capitol. The American people love Jackie's sense of style and elegance. Betty Ford. The search for human freedom can never be complete without freedom for women. Betty often went with her mother to help children who couldn't walk on their own. She learned a lot about how people should be treated. When she became First Lady, Betty fought for equal pay for everyone. She created a place for people who struggled with addictions. She also opened up about her own struggles with cancer letting the country know it was okay to have weaknesses. Lady Bird Johnson. Where flowers bloom, so does hope. Claudia's nanny once said she was as pretty as a ladybird. The nickname stuck. One of Lady Bird's favorite things to do was paddle on the lake near her home. Lady Bird's love of the outdoors only grew. As First Lady, she was committed to making the capital beautiful. planted millions of flowers along the routes and made sure areas with natural beauty and wildlife were kept safe for everyone to enjoy. Laura and Barbara Bush. Never lose sight of the fact that the most important yardstick of your success will be how you treat other people. Barbara Bush. Barbara spent many evenings reading together with her family. Her love of books came with her all the way to the White House. As First Lady, Barbara wanted every child to know how to read. Barbara's son, George, later became president like his dad. George's wife, Laura, followed Barbara's lead when she became First Lady. As a second grade teacher and school librarian, Laura knew that teaching children could change the world. Hillary Clinton. It is past time for women to take their rightful place side by side with men in the rooms where the fates of peoples, where their children's and grandchildren's fates are decided. Hillary once saw a group collecting money for the poor. She made a backyard carnival for neighborhood kids and donated all the dimes and nickels she earned. First Lady, Hillary argued for changes that would help women and children. She also became a state senator and secretary of state. In 2016, Hillary came closer than any woman in history to becoming president of the United States. Michelle Obama. There are still many causes worth sacrificing for. So much
much history yet to be made. Michelle did so well in school, she was able to skip a grade and graduate early. She loved learning and was accepted to one of the best universities in the world, Princeton. Michelle was a lawyer when her husband, Barack, became the first African-American president in U.S. history. As First Lady, she focused on raising her two daughters and helping our country get fit. She championed exercise and healthy eating and planted the first White House garden. These first ladies made a difference in the world. What kind of hero will you be? Butterfly? A caterpillar grows into a butterfly, but nobody knew exactly how that change, which is called metamorphosis, happened. Until Maria Sibela Marion. She loved insects so much that she spent years watching and drawing them. She traveled across the ocean to study the life cycles of caterpillars and other bugs. Maria's drawings were very detailed and beautiful and they gave scientists important information about insects and plants. Ah, oh, hello. <laughs> Her drawings were used in the Linnaean system that organizes all living things. This system is important in all of biology. Hang on. What is biology? Well, if we compared you and a rock, we'd find a lot of differences. Hmm. But the biggest one is that you're alive huh? and a rock isn't. Hmm. Biology looks at everything that is alive, like plants, animals, and you. People have been studying life for a long time. Almost a thousand years ago, Hildegard of Bingen wrote about biology and medicine. Back then, people didn't understand that they could get sick from drinking dirty water. Hildegard figured out that water should be cleaned first, and this stopped people from getting sick. She also studied how plants could be used as medicines and shared her ideas so people could have better health. Hmm. Oh, so biology keeps me from getting sick? It can, because biology teaches us all about how the body works. 
when we know what makes us sick, then we can find ways to get better. Just look at Jane Cook Wright. She was a doctor who saved many lives by running experiments in her laboratory. She grew cells in petri dishes and then watched what different medicines did to the cells. Her observations helped her pick the best treatments to give her patients. <laughs> what are cells? All living things are made of cells. Your body is made up of trillions. Each cell has its own special job. Muscle cells help you move, and skin cells protect your body. The cells inside your nose help you smell. Linda Buck won a Nobel Prize because she helped discover that nose cells have tiny message receivers called receptors. When different smells hit the receptors, the cells send messages to your brain. That's why, even if you closed your eyes, you could smell the difference between a flower and a dog. Wow. But how does a cell know its special job? Inside of every cell is an instruction manual called DNA. It's the blueprint, or plan, for your whole body. DNA tells the body how to make cells and build body parts like muscles, bones, and skin. It also determines the color of your eyes and hair and is what makes you, you. But DNA is not just in people's cells. It's also found in all living things. Barbara McClintock studied DNA in corn and discovered something completely amazing. By observing the colors in corn kernels, she learned that parts of DNA genes can actually switch places. She named these jumping genes transposons. Transposons were such a surprise that it was many years before people realized she was right and awarded her a Nobel Prize. Barbara loved figuring out tricky problems. When she made a hypothesis or scientific guess, she worked hard on her research and experiments to find answers. And it's a good thing, because her work with DNA and transposons taught us so much about our genes and DNA. You can start researching right now. <gasps> Pick something that you like and ask a question. <gasps> okay, why do butterflies have different colors? Go on and take your own guess. That's your hypothesis. Then observe by looking closer, 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 and see if you're right. You may be surprised by the results.
Have you ever had a really, really big dream? One of my big dreams is to be a swim coach because I just like seeing smiles on other kids' faces. Samantha Peshik had big dreams and she didn't give up on them either. She ended up going to the Olympics. Check it out in this book story, Little Girl, Big Dream. Little Girl, Big Dream. The story of Olympian Samantha Peshik. Little Samantha Peshik loved gymnastics. More than toys, even more than ice cream. And that's saying something. When she was just five years old, she watched the Olympics for the first time with her mom and dad. Of course, her favorite part was the gymnastics competition. She loved the way the athletes moved on the floor, the vault, the uneven bars, and the balance beam. It was right then and there that Samantha had a dream, a big dream. I'm going to be an Olympian, she shouted. Her mom and dad said, dream big, Samantha. You can accomplish anything you set your mind to. Samantha thought, to be an Olympian, I must be the very best gymnast out there. So Samantha practiced and dreamed and practiced and dreamed and practiced and dreamed some more. She even had her mom help her hang the word dream up in her room so she would never forget her big plan to be the very best. In her room, she would close her eyes and pretend to compete in front of the world, just like the Olympians on TV. She told everyone she met about this dream. I'm going to be an Olympic gymnast someday. She told her teacher, her neighbor, kids at the park, her coaches, <laughs> the grocer. And that means I have to be the best. She'd let them all know. The more Samantha practiced, the better she got. She soon found she was great at all of the events, except for one, the balance beam. She would climb onto the beam, put her arms in the air, take a deep breath, bend her knees to jump, and then... Nothing. For some reason, she was too afraid to do it. This made Samantha very upset. <laughs> I couldn't do it, Mom. I have to be the best. <laughs> or else I won't be able to go to the Olympics. <laughs> Samantha's mom looked at her and said, you have to have the bad days to appreciate the good days. Dream big, Samantha. You can accomplish anything you set your mind to. She remembered that when she went to bed at night, staring at the word dream on her wall. I can accomplish anything. I won't give up, no matter what. That meant it was time to keep trying at that scary balance beam. And with the help of her new coach, Peter, she finally overcame her fears. With Peter's coaching and her parents' love, Samantha felt unbeatable. Next stop, nationals. Or so she thought. When it was time to compete for her big chance, Samantha made a couple mistakes. 
she didn't make the team and became an alternate. Samantha was very upset again. Two little mistakes made her feel like one big failure. I'm so mad I didn't win. She mumbled on her drive home that day. Her parents looked at her and said, We don't love you because you win. We love you because we love you. Dream big, Samantha. You can accomplish anything you set your mind to. Samantha kept practicing and dreaming and practicing and dreaming and practicing some more. Finally, the day came. The day she had dreamed about since she was five years old. She made the Olympic team. She was all set to compete and be the very best when something terrible happened. Ah. While practicing right before the competition, Samantha hurt her ankle. Oh no. Samantha was very upset. And then she remembered her mom and dad's words. I have to have the bad days to appreciate the good days. I'm not loved because I win. I'm loved because I'm me. Maybe being the very best doesn't always mean winning the gold medal after all, Samantha thought. Maybe being the very best me today means supporting my team. Samantha cheered on her teammates during their floor routines. You can do it! She cheered them on during all of their routines. Yeah! Dream big, she told them. Yeah! You can accomplish anything you set your mind to, she said. Woo! And they did. Woohoo! Even with her hurt ankle, she was able to compete in the uneven bars. And it was her best routine ever. She stood on the Olympic podium and was awarded a silver medal. She watched as everyone cheered for her and for her team. Today, Samantha coaches kids just like you and reminds them to keep dreaming Keep practicing and keep supporting each other. Do you have a dream like Samantha? Go Samantha, go Samantha, go Samantha. I don't know about you, but I'm inspired to dream really big. My favorite part was when she hurt her ankle and she wouldn't let that stop her. So she practiced on the uneven bars and she got a silver medal. It made me feel kind of, this may sound weird, but kind of like bubbly and happy. Maybe I'll grow up to be a veterinarian. Maybe not a veterinarian, but maybe a swim coach. If you don't have books, then what are you waiting for? Books is kids safe. It has storybooks that are brought to life. And third, it's fun. I like to read books about fantasy and love. I tell other kids to get books because it's full of stories and laughter. I'll read it on the go, in a car, in a plane, even in a train. I've never been on a train. Don't wait around. Ask your grown up to download books now. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Vox app for free today.